Welcome on YouTube, welcome back to Chef Flowers Kitchen and today we'll be making one of my personal favorites from my ebook Vegan by Chef Flowers and it will be a vegan salt fish. Now if you say oh, how salt fish for vegan? Now I'm spelling it S-A-L-T-P-H-I-S-H, -S -S -H. those who have the book will know that and the P is actually for palm hearts. So I'm going to turn around and introduce it to exactly what I'm talking about. So this right here is a piece of heart of palm and it is exactly as it says. It's a heart of a certain species of palm using a lot of Latin recipes. You can find them in a can in a store like this. Goya and a few other brands have it in jars. Um, but today I'll actually be making vegan salt fish fritters just for a little twist. So I'll be using some salt, so a little curry, a little garlic powder, cayenne pepper and black pepper. And I hope you guys get to enjoy this recipe and try it. It'll be super easy, super delicious. And let's get into the first couple of steps. Alright guys, so first off I'm going to take the rest of the palm hearts out of the can. Um, now I open the can and kind of just like give them a rinse off with some hot water to kind of get rid of some of that brine. And remember to recycle your cans. Boom. Alright, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to get into chopping up our seasoning. And I'm just going to use a little bit of onion, not too much. Just enough to kind of cook up the palm hearts first before we introduce it into the actual fritters batter. And I'm going to try to chop this onion nice and small. So when it cook up and mix with the batter, it's nice and smooth. And I don't find no big, big chunks of onion in my fritters. Alright. So I'm going to be using four of these little garlic pieces here. They're quite small cloves. So I'm, that's why I'm using four. But if you had larger cloves that were say about the size of two of these, I'll definitely recommend only using two cloves of garlic. I'm going to give them a little crush and then fine chop. Somebody asked me on Instagram like, you know, what is some of the ways that I try to like practice knife safety. I try to keep my fingers like this behind the knife. I kind of just rock the knife back and forth as I go. So I move to the left with the knife, keeping my fingers like this so there's no way I can cut myself. garlic is done. Now we have our scotch bonnet. Same treatment. Um, I'll be using only about half of this so I'm just gonna take off that piece and that piece. Bam. I'm gonna chop him up fine as well. Alright. Gotcha. I feel like I need the whole thing because you know, this pepper is not as hot as I want it to be, so actually I'm just going to use the whole thing. And I don't mind spicy, but if you have a nice spicy scotch bonnet at home, <laughs> please <laughs> practice some caution. Especially touching your eyes and all of that after you chop it up. Like even now I'm just going to get a quick rinse off of the hands and keep it moving. Alright, so now that our season is chopped up, I'm just going to put them in this bowl here and set them aside. Here we go. Give my knife a little rinse. Here we go. So now, this is the part where you must be wondering how these palm hearts are going to turn into this vegan saltfish thing now. Fair enough. Now what I like to do is take the palm heart and cut it at a diagonal angle. So, so I'm going to go ahead and go like this. And you may be able to see if I kind of flake it away, it kind of looks like a flaked white fish. I'll give you a view on that. See? kind of looks like fish flakes. So that's kind of what we're going for. You know when you flake out the salt fish after you boil off the salt and thing. That's kind of the look I'm going for. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to take it and set it aside. As it is like that, it's kind of ready for the pan. The bigger pieces, I'll just try to chop smaller. So you want to cut 
you know, close, keep the pieces small, but still cut at that diagonal angle where you get that effect where it's kind of like the flake fish style. So I'm going to do that for the rest here. Keep it close, cut along the edge. Oop, back piece drop. The bigger pieces, you chop them up a little more. Alright. Okay. We're keeping it moving. Now, as I said earlier, like these palm hearts, um, I cooked them for the first time maybe like just last year. And after doing some research, I actually found that they're actually really high in a lot of in, um, nutrients and vitamins that are vital. Um, probably why they're used in a lot of Latin recipes, you know, they probably found that it was actually a really good uh, vegetable to use for their, for their recipes. So. It was actually cool. So I would definitely go ahead and look up palm hearts if you guys are interested. And there we go. We finish <laughs> flaking our fish. Now look at that. You can't tell me said that does not <laughs> resemble fish. So our next step now, I just want to chop up our sweet pepper. I'm going to take out the membrane here on the inside. Toss that away. There we go. Uh, I'm just going to be using half of this because I just kind of want some little dice pieces to use in the fritters itself. But this will also be going straight in the pan to kind of give that flavor and contribute to the dish on a whole. So I'm going to go ahead and dice them up to the sizes. There we go. And I can go ahead and drop this in the same bowl as the salt fish per se because it's going in the pan and we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so here we are at the pan. I'll be using coconut oil today as usual and let's go ahead and drop our aromatics into the pan. So this is our garlic, onion and scotch bonnet pepper. I'm going to be adding that nice flavorful profile to the fritters or just your vegan salvage if you're stuck in a dust tip. Step on, stand up. I love it. Now I don't want this to burn, so I'm going to go ahead and add our saltfish on. <laughs> yeah, man, I <right>, man. <laughs> and our sweet pepper as well. Early out, so we just want this to cook out. I find that the the palm hearts carry a lot of moisture, so if I can get rid of most of that before we get into the fritter step, then that will be good. So as it really still cooking, you can kind of cook this on like a medium high. Um, you still want to make sure your onions are nice and caramelized and stuff. So when I get to the color I'm looking for, I'll, I'll show you that. But for now, I want to make sure you still add some seasoning. So I'm going to add some salt. And remember, this is not salt fish. So go ahead and be generous with the salt. Or if you rather it not be salty, of course, you know, use your own judgment. I'll be adding some garlic powder as well. And then a little black pepper. Typical sausage seasoning, not new. That's one of the tricks to this, um, I guess, plant-based alternative thing. You know, you want to use the same spices that you that you usually use if you weren't cooking a um, plant-based version, just so that your palate is familiar with it. You enjoy the meal. Yet the flavor is there that you want, and you enjoy. It. So, as I said, once we get to the color that we're looking for. I'll come back and then um, I'll see you. So this has been cooking for about four minutes now. Uh, most of the seasoning is very fragrant. I can really smell the flavor that's gonna have. So this is kind of what it looks like. There we go. And for those who'll be stopping at this step, um, I hope you enjoy your vegan saltfish at home. Um, I've also made like saltfish rundown and all of that. Once the moisture is cooked, I'll just add a little coconut milk and vibes it up back. But next step here. We'll be taking our cooked saltfish, putting it in our bowl, right here. 
and then we we'll move on to the step which includes the critters. I'll give you guys a closer look at that so you can see. You can't tell me so you don't feel yourself. Take a look at that. So again, cool. here's what the sawfish look like, or the palm hearts rather. Some of you guys might <laughs> tear me up for calling it sawfish all the time, but this is it. Um, from here now, we're going to move on to our butter for the fritters. Um, I'll be cutting up fresh scallion, adding it to the butter and everything, um, as well as a little more seasoning. Okay, so first of all, we have a cup of flour. So I'll be sifting that through this. So make sure it's nice and airy, we don't want no clumps. Boom, there we go. And from here I'm gonna add some more dry seasoning, so I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic powder. Some black pepper again. Just a little bit of curry for color. Not too much. And again, with a little sea salt. Bam. So, now that all of that is in, I just want to give that a little stir. Make sure everything is evenly distributed in the flour. My apologies for the sniffles. The pepper, they must be here when I tell them, say, not is that. Deva. So, I'm going to go ahead and drop our salt fish <laughs> into our flour. There we go. You know, let me switch up the angle so you guys can have a better look at what's going on in this bowl. Alright, so, uh, I think you guys can see it a little better now. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to chop up my scallion. Chop up those ends. Real fine. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and mix this all up in the flour. Oops, make sure everything is nice and coated. And now we're going to incrementally add some water to get to a nice kind of almost pancake like consistency. So add some like that. So we're back at the pan and I have some coconut oil here heated up at a medium heat. It's been going for about a minute now, so it's just about ready to go. So let's drop a tester. I have my sawfish fritters butter right here. Just give it a little try, see what I'm going. Ah, you hear that? It's almost ready, just about. Mm -hmm. Now we kind of want to keep the heat at a medium to medium low, just to kind of make sure that the fritters kind of cook through safely, you know, burn up nothing and everything is good to go. So I'm going to grab a fork actually, so we can do our flipping. So I'm going to move the tester to the side, here we go. And once you see it start browning on the edge, you're good to go. So let's add our first piece in now. I love that sound. Can make that one out of the There we go.
can the test and we can see how around the rim is mostly done. Nice and golden brown, so we give it a flip, see how it looks. Clean. And of course I have my plate here with my paper towel just so that once everything is done, we can drain off the excess oil and we can enjoy our fritters. So I'm going to move these around so that I can flip them properly. As you can see, just like the test stuff, you can kind of see where around the rim is kind of getting nice and golden brown. So like this one now, I'm tempted to flip it, but you definitely want that perfect doneness on the other side. So you'll have to, you know, flip flop back and forth. With all this test now, I can't even wait to try it. So I'm going to take this out. As you can see, it's not necessarily like orange or whatever. It's just a nice defried doneness. I'm going to put that to the side on our napkin here. And as for this guy, I'm going to flip him. And then on. There we go. So, you see that? That is the color that we're looking for. That was a nice and crispy. I'm going to let them fry at least for two minutes on each side. Just kind of watch them carefully. And make sure your heat is nice and medium low. Don't want to burn the oil or burn the fritters. So one thing though, uh, before I go, when you fry your tester, it's a good way to kind of make it big enough so you can taste, you know, does your batter need some more salt, does it need some more seasoning, and you can add it in that point so that your next batches will be better to what you like. So I definitely recommend that. So I'm on my second batch now, and yo, here are the results of the first batch. Look how this pretty man. How many of you try this now? <laughs> how may I try to roll it out? But trust me, oh, these look and smell delicious. Woo, I can't wait until these. I'm just gonna fry about, mm, I guess, two more. So one more batch of two, and then I'll get into the taste test with you guys. I mean, honestly, guys, look at these beauties. Yo, me can't wait for us to jump into these. So this is our last batch. They should make about eight. Um, this is how much batter is left. So this is actually probably good for at least four more, maybe. So that's about, yeah, 12 servings just from this recipe. I'll make sure to drop it in the description below so you guys can follow the fritters part. But if you know, if you need the vegan sawfish recipe, go ahead and check out my ebook, Vegan by Chef Flo's Boy. It should pop up right here. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy watching this process. But let's get into the taste test. Ready? Let's go. So we just wrapped up making my vegan saltfish fritters. Have a nice look at that. Beautiful, aren't they? Um, the last two are frying up right there next to me. But I'm just going to go ahead and top these off with some scallion. Just to kind of wrap things up here. I'm going to go in for our first taste test. So I'm going to take this one here off the top. And let's see how what we got. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. I've been waiting to do this for a long, long time. I'm glad I finally did. I really hope you guys enjoy the recipe. Again, the recipe is going to be down in the description for the fritters part. If you want the selfish part, go ahead and check out Vegan by Chef Flowers Boy on Amazon.com. Again, the link is in the description. Thank you for checking out the video. And I'll see you guys again soon. Later.